Today we're painting Santa Claus. What's up, Leron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. And today, for Christmas, I thought we would paint Santa Claus. I know I'm like on the on the limit of the Christmas uh, holiday, but I decided to do this video uh, today uh, just because it fit my schedule best. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, some of you may have probably seen the time lapse. Here's the final result of that. Really pleased with it. A lot of negative painting and lots of strong darks around the face which I love. Um, I actually used uh, this, I hung it in front of me while I was working uh, just so that I have a large black and white reference. Um, I really enjoyed this process and the color selection which I will talk about in just a few moments uh, was one that I feel like best conveys this character. So I decided to go with a warm red, um, not so much the magentas and, and rose and stuff like that, but more towards the cadmium, the pyrrole, uh, because I felt like this is more of the Christmas Santa Claus red. Okay, so I really hope you will enjoy this process. I had a lot of fun doing it. Let's get started. Okay, so I wanted to show you a bit more of the drawing process this time. Uh, usually I don't show it, and for me it's just very slow. Um, oddly enough, as much as I'm, I think I'm good at uh, sketching and drawing scenes in a very detailed manner, I can't really say the same thing for uh, portraits. They require me tremendous amount of attention and and and. Uh, being very careful. Uh, what I basically did was to take some take some measurements and see where the where his head starts, um, where his nose is, where his lips are, and where the eyes are and the glasses. And I just marked a few dots by measuring um, and comparing to the reference. And then I went ahead and freestyled it a little more based on the the areas I marked. Now the most important part when drawing something that is meant to be painted, I think there are two important things. So the first one is you wanna you wanna sketch where the shadows and lights are. You won't necessarily sketch everything in the from the picture uh, or from the reference that's in front of you. You will you will wanna get the um, the lines of shadow. Okay. So sometimes the drawing won't even reflect um, objectively looking at it at the, the object itself uh, but it would rather be a representation of the light and shadow and you can really see I did this with the eyes and the, like the the eyelid uh, of his left eye to our right it's just like a, a weird shape um, and so this is at least how I approach this um, now the second thing you want to take into consideration is to not put too many details because you do want to let the paint do most of the job if you're going to paint. Now with this particular portrait I think I did a really good job with allowing the paint to do most of the work and this is why it turned out a little looser and I think a little more me, meaning it has more of a um, <clears throat> more of a personal more of my personal style in it, okay? Um, now, this video runs at double speed, okay? I felt like the previous tutorial, uh, it was very slow in terms of the initial wash especially, and so I decided to just run everything on a double speed. The painting process was about maybe um, an hour or so, so this one's about 20 minutes. Um, the color selection, I knew that with this one I'm gonna choose a warm red, I don't remember if I mentioned this in the intro or in the outro, but I wanted to use a warm red because this is more of the Santa Claus color, um, not the not as much the uh, magentas or purples or violets. Or I wanted to red, the red to be really warm and almost orangey. Um, now with that, I decided to go with the uh, thalo blue as I did in the last few portraits. Um, my main concern, by the way, now is just getting a wash that's somewhat even. So you see I'm leaving uh, quite a bead on the left as well, so that I can later on connect it to the rest of the wash. Now, this stage is very difficult in many cases and m very easy in, in many aspects, sorry, not cases. So, uh, on the one hand, you have a lot of freedom because not all the values are defined and you can kind of wing it and go crazy, but on the other hand, uh, you still want to get a good read of where the highlights are and, and skip those, leave them white, 
um, and just get the color harmony to look good. So the more it's like the more you improve with something, the more you realize its nuances, and then you understand how challenging it actually is. Uh, I think in the beginning you tend to, well, at least this was my experience. I tended to underestimate how some how hard some stages of the painting process are and so I just skimped over them it was literally lack of attention that prevented me from getting good results in some cases not just the skill itself but then when you kind of get the balance of when you should be attentive and when you have more leeway then you can get a good balance in your creation now here I just wanted to get a very light wash on the left side so I put a lot of water in it as you can see sorry just blowing my nose a bit uh, uh, the weather here made my nose go crazy um, so I had a lot of just um, just a lot of nose issues I guess um, so in any case now I'm trying to blend it in because I felt like I left a bit too much white space there okay so I tried to blend that uh, into blend the color a little more into the white now I skipped some highlights on the glasses and on the face um, and I will do the same for the left side of the mustache uh, it, it is very light okay uh, and it's important to to keep those highlights it's critical actually if you're gonna want to get a large range of values uh, by the way the brush I'm using is a new one I got um, I had a, some frustrations with it because um, I'll tell you more about it in a moment but the thing is it it dropped quite a lot of hairs um, and then I remembered that some brushes tend to do that so you kind of have to just go through one to four paintings and then it stops doing that um, but it, it can take some time so uh, it took some time for it to stop doing that and now I have like three paintings with a lot of <laughs> brush hair on them but in any case this is a Windsor Newton uh, I believe it's of a series called series 7 by the way notice how I'm connecting the face here to the background okay there is nothing there but I pull the blue to the right uh, because I want to connect it later on to the background and do some negative painting which is the life of this painting by the way the negative aspect of it um, now I'm painting around the mouth but what I will do in a moment is take some, some darker paint uh, mix it up and put it on the mouth and I will let it mix into the wet areas because if you notice in the reference um, the areas where it mixes are actually darker so that turns out quite nicely with this example um, the paper is mostly leveled it has just a little bit of a step to it or um, you know like um, the surface is at a very slight angle um, and yeah and you can really see the dominant colors here are the pyro scarlet and the thalo uh, blue uh, and and I do put in some hints of new gamboge here and there on the face in the shadows also I found that I love putting yellow in the shadows it makes them so rich um, so now I'm taking this mid step uh, of drawing the painting the hat the cape cap I don't know how you would call that um, of just the the pure red okay I try to keep this as pure as possible and later on it felt a bit too pure so I added just a bit of uh, new gamboge and now you can see it turned a bit orange and finally I'm also adding a bit of blue um, just to have it a little darker I was afraid that it's gonna dry up so light and I didn't want to retouch this part and if you notice the reference photo on the bottom left um, this part is really dark um, compared to the fluffy um, w white furry part of the ha of the hat uh, this part is really dark and so I wanted to get that in one wash um, and because I'm not going to darken this left part of the of the white fluffy area I knew that as long as I get a dark enough wash on that left area I'm good to go so uh, also notice there's heavy negative painting already here uh, I'm bringing out the shape of the fluffy area by painting the dark area around it there are some gaps I didn't do a perfect job but in the grand scheme of things it's gonna be lost in the details and it will be barely noticeable um, so now I'm adding some shadows here and there and if you look at the reference photo again you'll see those shadows uh, for that I'm using a somewhat neutral mixture of the blue and uh, red the good thing about the pyrrole uh, scarlet and the <clears throat> or even cadmium red and thalo blue is that they neutralize each other quite well so they can pull together an entire painting uh, by the way I really like this color combination in terms of it does feel like cold 
and like icy and snowy but also the warm red of the of santa claus so uh, i think it's a good combo now for the shadows here i'm using some yellow because i felt like it was missing and i find that in many of my paintings yellow ends up being missing somehow i use a lot of blues and reds and so you get a large variety of blue red and the purple in between uh so now i'm really attentive uh in in trying to get in a lot of yellows as well so this stage is also a challenging one because now i'm putting in all the shadows and um this is supposed to be the the middle values i guess not the darkest but definitely not the lightest um, but I went ahead and filled kind of everything up with it uh, and this this wash really does most of the work here so you really have to work carefully with the reference maybe posterize it or, or do some image manipulation um, or maybe do a value sketch before the painting to make sure you get the the shapes of everything right because it, it is a very challenging stage it's what does most of the heavy lifting of the painting. So now you see I lightened it up a bit and it's got it's a pretty wet wash so it's gonna dry a little lighter. Um, already negative painting around the eyebrows <clears throat> especially on the eyebrow on our right um, I made sure to leave quite a few highlights that are um, pure white. Uh, this was important and now if you notice this part of the of the hat is also dark so uh, I added some darkness they're really working carefully this is double speed remember um, I found that watching a lot of YouTube videos on in double or even more than that um, or not double maybe 1.25 or double speed um, really conditioned me to work way too fast so make sure if that happens to you I just want you to make sure that that you're aware of it at least because um, this is already double speed so yeah sometimes you know I just want to see the process really fast and and so I would run the YouTube video on double speed in the YouTube interface and it really conditioned me to work way too fast so uh, make sure that doesn't happen to you um, by the way, I'm gonna shoot another video soon talking about Patreon. So this is something I've I've been thinking on for quite some time now. Um, I had a, a bit of resistance in the past to using platforms such as Patreon, uh, but then I, I started seeing the value in it slowly but surely, uh, and so I will uh, revive my Patreon page. Um, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible to kind of, if you want to uh, support me in in, uh, in any way, then you can do it through there. Um, but I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going to provide some very simple stuff there and it will be, it may feel more like a donation to the cause. Um, so I will probably put a link in the description box, uh, but I will make an official video talking about that. Uh, okay, so basically it's a platform that allows me to provide some extra stuff to you. Um, and in turn, you uh, help me by donating to my cause, to what I want to promote, which is basically, I'll write it all in there. But what I want to do is, um, just I have so many goals, but basically I want to be able to communicate with as many people as possible and inspire as many people as possible to create with complete passion and courage uh, and to just be brave about their creation. Because I see a lot of artists uh, that are afraid to, bring their stuff out into the world even though they're insanely good um, and it's just a shame and also another thing I want to achieve is I want to kind of give watercolor a hip-hop status <laughs> um, and make it a really popular medium especially among young people um, so um, it's like a donation on a monthly basis and Basically, all the money uh, that comes from there will be reinvested in things that will allow me to either improve my skills tremendously so I can inspire more or and or uh, improve the creation process and the, my ability to, to share it. Um, so you'll see uh, you actually set up some milestones there, some goals. The next major one for me is, of course, the studio that I talked about quite some time now. Uh, the moment I have a studio, I can immediately go back to making at least five videos a week uh, because I'll have a much more comfortable place to uh, shoot and record videos. Uh, so this is like my first initial plan. Um, uh, I, I set up actually a milestone of $500 there. Uh, as soon as I get to that, I can definitely afford a studio like easy peasy. Uh, so I wrote it down there. And in any case, everything I do here is, you know, 100% free. Um, 
but if you donate there, you get access to some extra stuff like um, like uh, previews and sneak peeks into videos. And I will share some paintings um, with my own self-critique and high-quality scans and things that I don't share anywhere else. Not even on Instagram and Snapchat and those platforms. So I think it's a really cool way for you to experience more of what I do. And in turn, like donate $1 or $5 a month, which is... Uh, really helpful. Uh, so in any case, man, I was <laughs> I, I was blabbering on. Let's talk a bit about the process. The main thing I want you to notice is on the top right area, you get a, a large yellow stain there in the shadows. This is so key because if you try and obstruct it with your hand, you'll see it's just missing. Um, there's some need for yellow here. There's a lot of green now on the beard on the left side of the face. And this green has obviously yellow in it. So that's the thing that saves it. But uh, if you set this green aside, it's just too blue and red. So I really wanted to make sure that I add some pure yellow there. And of course, it's not pure. It's really sorry about that. It's really mixed. But still, it is yellow compared to the other colors. Um, so th the whole right side of this painting was a struggle. As you saw, I had to really work carefully around it. But with that, uh, together with that, I wasn't afraid on keeping things very loose, as you can see, leaving a lot of gaps in the paint. And I think this is what brings it this ma the magic. Now, one more thing I want to divert your attention to is notice the right side of the glasses. Uh, I made sure and I'm just abstracting them with my hand, but in a moment you'll see. I just wanted to make sure that they connect with that wash. Okay, so if you can connect as many parts as you can, that's that's the best case scenario. You're not supposed to really see any brush stroke at the end of the process. You're just supposed to feel what you're looking at. So you see the glasses are connected to the dark uh, areas of the wash on the right. Uh, and this is really important uh, to ensure the fluidity and all the good qualities of, of a watercolor painting, basically. So I just had to take a short nose uh, blowing break. <laughs> um, so I just cut the video for a moment. But anyway, uh, you won't know this thing. Um, so now I'm using green for the uh, shadows on the left side of the face. And I think this leads to a very nice balance. And it does make sense if you think about it, because on the right side of our right side, you have a lot of blues, which are cool and really work well with shadows. On the left side, you want to maybe put some more light into the shadows and you add more light by adding yellows and warmers. That's one possibility. So if you add yellow to the blue, you get a green, which makes this really work well, in my opinion. Um, there's one thing I discovered, um, I think, in the last few months, uh, and that is even if you're using a, a limited palette of maybe three colors, you won't always be able to nail the harmony the way you want. So here I feel like it's really good. It's working really well. There is a good harmony in the colors. But with that, I could use the colors a little differently and it won't have any harmony. Well, it will have harmony, technically speaking, but it just won't look good. Um, and that is because the way you use the colors really matters and how pure you keep them really matters. If you don't uh, make sure you to keep some of their purity, it can ruin a lot of things. Um, so you need to really give the viewer a sense of all of the colors. Um, so now I'm moving on to the darkest wash. This is as dark as this one will get. Um, and I basically reserve that to the darkest shadow. So you can see it's the um, it's under the cap or hat, the glasses, the shadows that the glasses cast on the face uh, and all the right area of the face, basically. Now, my plan and I started this from the left to the right uh, is that I want to connect the right side of the face completely, entirely with the background that'll, that's going to be darker. OK, and the negative painting is going to play a major role in this one. So if you notice the bottom area of his beard, uh, there isn't really a clear bound boundary or border between the beard and the white space. I just kind of threw that in there. I'm, I'm abstracting it with my hand, but now you can see it. The reason for that is that I'm going to have a negative wash coming uh, at the, the background, and you'll see this in just a moment. Basically, it's the same as I'm doing under the, the hat here. Uh, I'm negative painting the, the shape of the hat by adding the shadows in. Um, I'm defining where it ends. Uh, so this is just really important to, to get right, I guess. And now I'm adding some darker darks in, on the right side of the hat. Um, 
Now, the funny thing is, you have a small thumbnail of the face on the left, and the small thumbnail allows us to see the values much more easily. Um, I was working with a larger picture, printed one, um, and what this led to is you, you really have to sometimes focus and make sure you see the big picture together with the small details. And I, th I find it's always a game of going from the micro to macro, micro to macro, meaning you need to see the overall values and colors, but then you need to zoom in on the details and get them right. Um, when I think about it, painting is really a challenging thing in general. Like if you, if you really think about it, the skill itself is so complex and it has so many facets and so many different aspects and dimensions of control. Um, and I find it fascinating. You know, sometimes you need to stop and really be grateful for what you can do and the way that you did come. Even if you don't necessarily like all your artistic work, sometimes we, I think, really underestimate how just how challenging some things are um and you know art in general from what i'm starting to slowly learn it requires a lot of intelligence you know um like visual intelligence and understanding of composition and man it's just so many skills bunched up into one small narrow field and even it doesn't really matter what artistic skill it is it requires just so much of a lot of different micro mini skills that and 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 basically intelligence I would say it's just one type of intelligence I guess creative um, I've been watching a lot of Jordan Peterson and, and he talks about that a lot he, he talks about how rare it is to be actually a creative person he says that the dispersion of of creativity is basically the vast majority of popu population is zero on the scale of creativity and it's super rare to be really uh, creatively gifted and if you're watching this video you probably are because you have an interest in it um, at, at the bare minimum by the way notice this negative painting and how it pulls this this side of the painting together this is just a beautiful part I think so in any case if you're you ha you at the very minimum you have interest in this thing which already separates you from from the majority of the population and not to say that you can't learn how to be more creative because really I believe you can even though there's a lot of research that shows otherwise from what I hear but I do believe you can become really better at a narrow field of creative endeavor um, but but having that kind of built into you or naturally developed in you over time I think it's important to to recognize that and be th grateful and thankful for that especially during Christmas time, I guess. So, um, yeah, and, and uh, by the way, I went to Jaffa to look at the Christmas tree, and it was just really fun. Um, I love the, the, this holiday's atmosphere, even though I never celebrated it, so I definitely want to do that one day. Now, notice how I add a bit of greens, a bit of yellows to the background. This is really important because, um, first off, it hints, it's like the, the, the holiday colors, you know, green and red, so that was really important for me to get. Uh, and second, it just works in harmony really well with the painting. Uh, the top left corner has a lot of yellow in it, and notice how it mimics kind of the yellow in the deepest shadows on the right, um, right next to his eye, and I just really love the way that everything works here. Um, I left, I think, too many gaps of white on the left side of the painting, as you'll see in just a few moments, uh, but this is so minuscule or maybe so insignificant it doesn't really matter and uh, now notice how the negative painting pulls together the other side of the beard um, and this is really almost done now um, so yeah I really enjoyed this process I have to say uh, and I felt so immersed in it um, and I f feel like it brought a lot of my skills to the front for me as well so here's the final result and let's conclude this so friends, here's the final result. I wanted to give you a better look. It finally it started to rain even heavier. So that's really suitable for today and the atmosphere. I uh, really, really enjoyed working on this one. Uh, tried to leave a few highlights on the glasses, but failed a bit. And <laughs> yeah, whatever. But um, one thing I did notice is how I was able to uh, be more loose than usual with this one. So um, you can see the glasses aren't even of, of, of identical 
size and there's a lot of things I kind of messed up uh, but still really enjoyed working on this one uh, now I promised I will take off the tape so uh, let me take it off it's pretty much dry now uh, I find that it's better to to let it dry thoroughly before removing the tape because it helps reduce the buckling okay so when I say to wait for a while I mean like at least a few hours so maybe three or four hours I finished this one about 30 or 40 minutes ago uh, so not ideal but still you can take it off it won't be too terrible and if you frame it then it doesn't really even matter so in any case yeah I promise I'll show you uh, with, the, with the next painting uh, what it looks like without the tape so here we go and the last one here up top I'm gonna take this one off as well and there we have it, the final result. Let me hold it up a little closer to the camera and you can see. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Let's change the angle and wrap up this video. So this is it friends, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you also enjoyed seeing some of the drawing process as well. It's just so meticulous sometimes and so slow I really take my time and uh, I just find it to be maybe boring on camera but I will try to share more of that um, it's really really rainy and kind of windy outside so befitting the, <laughs> the Christmas I guess but no snow here in Israel uh, here's again the final result I really hope you enjoyed this one. I feel like I learned a lot from it. Try to keep it uh, rather loose, not worry too much about the accuracy and the details and, and getting a large range of values necessarily. I really have here, uh, I think like lights and darks and not, not a lot of mid-tones, uh, which I'm pleased with. I deliberately knew that I could have added a few more glazes in between. So you have the very light, the very dark, and then you add something that's kind of in the middle. But I felt like this was done and I wanted to keep it very, let's say open for interpretation okay so I really hope you enjoyed this one if you still haven't subscribed to my channel make sure you do that uh, also follow me on snapchat Instagram for more daily updates check out my podcast I am publishing a lot of new uh, episodes and I'm just having a lot of fun with it and I think I'm starting to talk about concepts that are at a little higher level because the way that I do it actually develops my thought processes and having that other media that is just talking and not video um, really helps bring out a lot of other sides in me okay so uh, one more thing I am planning on making a lot of um, outdoors painting videos because I know a lot of you enjoy them uh, so <laughs> don't worry about that I will make more and more and more of these have Merry Christmas uh, um, and a happy new year if you're celebrating and if not have an awesome day week and soon a new year uh, 2018 and this is it i will see you again in another video real soon